Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we will present about the treatment of Muslim covenant and uh, our group has been tasked use the air as a quote medium. First of all, uh, we would like to thank uh, our lecturer for teaching and educating us until we successfully complete this uh, task. And I also want to thank to my teammates for providing good cooperation and commitment to prepare this assignment. Next. This is my group member. Uh, uh, first, uh, me is Sahim Waini Ben Johari. And second, we have Azim Muhammad Azim Ben Zakaria. And third, we have Fahru Hidayat Ben Zahimi. And lastly, we have Afiq Jamil Benjana Hidu. This is our content in this slide. First, we have Fit Treatment. Okay, introduction. Fit Treatment of Steel is a heat process in which steel are heated to a hard temperature for a period of time and then cool. Transforming or changing the mechanical property without changing the shape of the metal. Handling, normalizing, hardening, and temper and case hardening are some of the most common heat treatment process for machine steel. For heat treatment, we have three steps. First, the material was heat up to a particular temperature. Second, holding or soaking material at the right temperature for the right amount of time. And third, we have cooling the material with cooling media according to the instruction. Next. So for the equipment, we have laser cut machine. Uh, a laser cut machine is used to cut the workpiece to be used in this task. Second, we have furnace. The furnace serves as a place to burn the workpiece at a temperature of 900 degrees for 50, 45 minutes. And we have tong. Tong are used as tool for lifting workpiece to be placed into the furnace and it also used to lift workpiece that have been baked to be placed into containers prepared for the cooling process. Next. Uh, we have plain carbon steel used as a workpiece in heat treatment in fact and tensile We have uh, consuming media like water, quenching oil and ice. Next. So for the heat treatment process, first is specimen preparation. First, we have uh, we we have to make a laser cut machine. is used to cut the specimen from a multi plate. Uh, at the laser cut machine, we have to input the NC code. Next, uh, we must setting up and calibration the datum of the machine. The plate was put and clamped on the machine to be cut. After that, we have to calibrate and make sure setup is complete. We do the cutting process. And lastly, we have to collect the workpiece so that the specimen can be tested for impact and size. Second, we have operational process. All carbon steel specimen must be treated according to the specification defined. The air can be used as a cooling method for our team. People the table heat treatment process for each group. So for the specimen group one, we have to add the temperature is 90 degree and soaking time is 45 minutes and the consolidation is metal air. Next. So for the, the oxidation process. 
place the specimen into gas burner and he the specimen to out to out sanitation temperature and hold according to the soaking time. For the quenching process, we must deeply immerse the specimen into the quenching medium for rapid cooling rapid cooling process and left the specimen on a brick to cool to room temperature. Specimen preparation for hardness test and micro structure and receive. We must grind the surface of the specimen if possible, otherwise motion the surface with time paper and polish the part to be test. Make sure the surface is flat and smooth. Ensure the test piece is clean from any oil, grease or rust. So for the result, we can see the effect of the heat treatment process as the specimen changes in terms of surface and density. The diagram below show of a workpiece that has not been heat treated using a furnace. And the picture as you can see, uh, this is our workpiece or specimen that has undergone the heat treatment process. Discussion Heat treatment process for specimen Heating The specimen is heat to precise temperature 900 degrees okay. For the first 30 minutes Soaking or holding After applying heat treatment Heat treatment for the specimen The specimen heat in the furnace for 45 minutes until soft turning So lastly is cooling after 75 minutes, the specimen is quickly quenched in cooling media and placed there for the next 24 hours to observe the heat treatment process effect on the specimen. Next. Okay, next moving on to the second task which is the impact task. Introduction. An impact task is used to observe the machining, the machining that a material will exhibit when it experiences a shock loading that causes specimen to immediately deform, fracture or rupture capture, uh, completely. The purpose of an impact test is to determine the ability of the material to absorb energy during the collision. This energy may be used to determine the toughness, impact strength, fracture resistance, impact resistance or fracture resistance of the material depending on the test that was performed and the characteristic that is to be determined. Next, moving on to the equipment, we use the Chappie Impact Machine which is in Strong Chase 1950 and the hammer is 76,000 and then we have the specimen material which is plain carbon steel and the, as you can see there is a drawing of the specific uh, specimen dimension Next, moving on to the process flow First and foremost, we must start up the machine and switch on the button and then uh, we use for the, we perform the calibration process and then after that for the second process uh, position the hammer to restore to release its position and we lock the hammer position and after that uh, we place the specimen onto the support spam where the notch is in the center position uh, as refer to the picture there and moving on to the next process we press the safety lever and release the knob to hammer impact with the specimen and then after that we can get the result of the test so next this is the result uh, of the test which is as you can see there's the picture for the treated specimen and untreated specimens uh, the current slot result for the treated specimen is a 39.632 joules and the untreated is 10.918. So for the conclusion of this impact test, the fracture surface of impact test show the untreated specimen is slightly more brittle rather than the treated specimen. The higher amount of energy absorbed by the treated specimen describe the toughness and deductibility of the materials. Refer from the result, the amount of energy required to break a ductile material is greater than for a brittle material. Based on the result and discussion, it concludes that the treated specimen is more better properties in terms of toughness and ductility. 
next is a tensile test. So the introduction of a tensile test is the purpose of a tensile uh, is to determine the material mechanical property on a graph or plot. A tensile test involves applying tensile pulling force to substance and measuring the reaction of the material. Tensile test assess how strong a material is and how much it can stretch by doing so. Next. The equipment that we use for this uh, test is a universe testing machine. A second is a gripper. A second is a computer. And fourth is a plate carbon steel, untreated and treated. This is our material. First, we are doing ISO drawing. And second, it's placement, untreated and treated. So the process of flow first, uh, open the metal files from uh, Shimazu software and click tensile test. After that second, uh, put the specimen in the top grid and tighten it in place. Be carefully not to bend the specimen with tightening. Step is uh, set the position and force to be zero in the system. Force uh, start the test by pressing the start button and wait until the specimen broke and save the data result in the uh, in the DDX file. Five, uh, after the specimen has broken, remove remove the two halves uh, of the specimen. This is our result after using universe test, testing uh, machine to bend the specimen. Next. This is our result. Uh, un uh, treated and untreated. Next. Discussion uh, of tensor test is the data obtained from the universe testing machine show the difference in rate of intention in treated and untreated. The graph show the tensor strength for treated is greater than untreated specimen. Mass force for treated is 24, 3, 3, 6, 3, 4, 6 km and for untreated is 639355 km. So the tensile strength for treated specimen is 684293 MPA and untreated specimen is 470431 MPA. Next for the max strain for treated specimen is 2334. 0.4% and untreated specimen 146920% for break force treated is 92.2740 kn and untreated is 12.2200 kn ultimately the treated elastic is 2405.76 higher than the untreated elastic. Next. Uh, last but not least, uh, the conclusion. To be concluded, the treatment treated specimen is more darker and less bitter while the treater show that is more bitter and less darker. Naturally, is uh, defined as the ability of material to reform plastic deformation before fracture. Next, bitter pressure are described as a pressure crack that is nearly perpendicular to the direction applied stress. Bitter pressure exert low energy absorption before fracture and little plastic deformation. It is show that the untreated specimen where the fracture is more bitter and low data than We go to the task 4 and introduction. Microstructure is a very small scale structure of material defined as the structure of repair surface of material as revealed by an optical microscope above 25 magnification. 
The microstructure of material can strongly influence physical properties such as strength, toughness, ductility, hardness, corrosion resistance, and high low temperature behavior or wear resistance. Next, uh, microstructure analysis is a core technique in materials engineering is examining effects in materials. Uh, helps and, and also helps to develop the relation between the microstructure of the material and its properties. Next. Then we go to the equipment and tools. Uh, we follow the arrow first and the first picture is a hot mounting press machine. The aim of mounting is to handle small or odd shaped specimen and to protect fragile materials. Uh, and then uh, the next is a abrasive cutting machine, which is a full range of abrasive and precision cutting machine and sectioning saw equipment for metallurgy testing. And we go to the third uh, feature, which is a uh, ultrasonic bar used through high frequency sound with transmit through liquid to scrub to clean the surface of emissive parts. And then uh, we have invert microscope. An invert microscope is a microscope in which the light source is pointing down onto the stage, while the sample is viewed from the below. And then we have uh, lab tongs. Uh, and so we have the polisher and grinder machine, which is the function is the goal uh, uh, to prepare the final polish specimen that is free of deformation and suitable for analysis. And lastly is uh, optical microscope, which is the function is uh, to uh, use a visible light and system of lens to generate magnetic image of small object. Next. And then this is our specimen, which is uh, the type is uh, plain carbon steel, PCS. Next. And we go to the grinding and polishing. Uh, the first feature is abrasive paper grid, uh, used to remove material from surface, either to make them smoother than a remove layer of material. And then we have a uh, polishing cloth, and uh, the the next is. Uh, 0 0.02 micrometer colloidal silica and we have uh, 0 0.05 uh, alumina and also we have diamond suspension uh, and the lastly is uh, the powder which is the phenolic powder and next so uh, for the specimen preparation uh, the specimen was cut using handsaw cutting at the, you can see the first picture there. And then uh, you can see the result of the specimen after once it has been cutting. Next. And uh, we go to the operational process. And uh, firstly is uh, we must uh, switch on the machine and then uh, we must set the parameter, set up the specimen at the machine place the specimen, uh, specimen and insert the phenomenal powder into the mold chamber and the next is close the chamber and press the green button to start mounting process and then uh, you can see the mounting process is complete and we take out the specimen and lastly is uh, we need to do the cleaning process and you can see the last feature is uh, the final product and then next And for the grinding and polishing process, uh, for the step is uh, firstly is we switch on the machine and prepare for grinding process and then uh, grinding process change the abrasive paper and lastly is polishing process with polishing cloth and diamond suspension. And then next, for the cleaning process, uh, for the step is switch on the ultrasonic bath and prepare the specimen and then soak the grind specimen in the water and then use this style water to clean the specimen and a hand dryer to dry it and then uh, we have etching process which is the specimen submerged in needle for only 10 seconds and then uh, lastly is uh, microstructure examination first uh, we switch on the revert, uh, invert microscope and then put the sample is placed on the stage and adjust the brightness and then the last we find the best image and using invert microscope for capture image and then next as you can
can see the result is a photomicrograph that we observe for the specimen. As you can see, the label A is uh, the photo. Uh, photo A is a uh, hundred times zoom, and then the B is a uh, five hundred times zoom. The next, and for the discussion, first uh, image shows a specimen with a polished but undrawn surface. This provides a clear image for the microscope that excludes information about the specimen microstructure. And then uh, the second point is this uh, specimen engraved with grains having the, some, the same orientation. And then the third is uh, the picture show as an engraved surface with different oriented grains. And then lastly is a uh, show illustrate how contrast can be created by an inch surface which include an inch grain boundary. And then next. So, uh, purpose of the procedure is a uh, mounting used to protect fragile or coat items uh, and then grinding, proper grinding, remove damage or deformed surface material and we have polishing, polishing uh, so performed with fully abrasive on clothes and then uh, the lastly we have uh, etching through a target chemical attack used to reveal the metal's microstructure and distort layer that form during grinding and polishing and next and we have conclusion. So the etching and grinding process proved to be the most important procedures in ensuring the quality of the specimen prepared in order to stay crystal clear through the resin. And then uh, cleaning, grinding, intermediate polishing, fine polishing and etching were used to produce metallurgic samples. And then lastly is under the light microscope, the treated and untreated metal show a considerable, considerable change in microstructure with change from the light with austenite to a more uniform metal site after heat treatment. Okay, next moving on to the fifth, uh, fifth task, which is the hardness task for the introduction. Hardness is measured in terms of the size of an impression made in a specimen by an inventor of a specific shape when a specified force is applied for a specified time. The indent being measured after the force has been removed. The three principal standard methods are Brunel, Wickers, and Rockwell, each of, the, each, of, each of which has a range of scale defined by a combination of applied load and indenter geometry. The hardness test is used to establish a material's appropriateness for a certain application of the treatment to which it has been subjected. A material hardness is defined as its ability to resist plastic formation, penetration, indentation, and scratching. Next, moving on to the equipment and tool. The first is the Rockwell hardness tester, uh, used to determine the hardness of a material by measuring the depth of penetration of an indenter on the material being tested. Next, the material. As you can see, we are using the PCS, which is the plain carbon steel. And last but not least, it is sandpaper used to remove material from a surface either to make them smoother, to remove a layer of materials, or sometimes to make the surface tougher. Moving on to the procedure, first and foremost, we cut the specimen to desired dimensions and then use the sandpaper to make the surface for the specimen smoother. And And then the result of the specimen after sanding after the end polishing process, as you can see, that is uh, very smooth. Next, the operational process, which is switch on the power for the Rockwell hardness testing machine. Select the ball indenter with a diameter of 1.587 mm and set the preload test force with 10 kgf. And then setting the machine parameter, which is uh, press the menu and press the button. And then we set the parameter of the machines. And then place the specimen on the anvil properly and then slowly turn the elevation handle clockwise so that the specimen then stop when the indenter bar is full for the test is initiate automatically with click sound. And then the last is you can see the result after testing the hardness data will be recorded from each five points and it will be shown on the screen as HRC or Sharp. So this is the result of the hardness test, which is as you can see, the mild steel is uh, for the HRB average is 71. 
copper alloy is 53, aluminium alloy is 60, and plain carbon steel is 84. So if you arrange the softest material to the hardest material, you can see that the copper alloy is the softest, and then go to the aluminium alloy, and next to the mild steel, and last but not least, the plain carbon steel. So the, the advantage and the disadvantage of this hard, hardware, hard, of this hardness test is the hardness value directly readable, no optical evaluation required, and no specimen preparation is required. And for the disadvantages, it is not always the most accurate hardness testing method, as even a slight error in measuring the depth difference can result in a significant error in the calculated hardness value. And the test location must be completely free of all contamination. That's the difference between the rock well and the superficial rock well test. The primary difference between the standard rock well hardness test and superficial rock well hardness test is that it's rock well. The pre the preforce is always 10 kgf, whereas in superficial rock well the preforce is 3 kgf. Also, the main force of the total test force in standard rock well hardness test can be vary between 60, 100, or 150 kgf. Whereas in the superficial rock well hardness test, it can vary between 50, 30, and 45 kgf. Next, one of the very important points that we can consider is the the hardness value determined by the standard rock well hardness test can be converted to the superficial hard rock well hardness test value and vice versa. Other than that, the superficial rock well method is more commonly used in Europe while it was invented in the US. The superficial hardness test is primarily used to test thin layer of component of material whose calculated hardness value is outside the standard rock well scale. And then, why hardness properties is important? First, to determine these material properties of a valuable insight into the strength, flexibility, durability, and capabilities of a wide range of a component type from raw material to finished goods and prepared specimen. Hardness is the property of the material that enables it to resist plastic deformation, penetration, indentation, and scratching. From an engineering standpoint, hardness is very important because of the resistance of wear by either friction or erosion by steam oil and water generally increase with hardness. So that's all from us. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.